Hello again, friends. This is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com, and welcome back to another JavaFX video tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to look at the progress bar. A progress bar is a control that is used to visualize the progression of an extended computer operation, such as a download, a file transfer, or the current playback location of a media file, a song, or a video. JavaFX supports two different flavors of the progress bar. The indeterminate, where we don't know how many of something that we want to display, and the determinate, where we know the maximum number that we want to display. So let's create first an indeterminate progress bar. I've already created a project, and here we are at our standard starting point. So in our start method, I'm going to create a progress bar. The type is progress bar. I'm going to use the variable name progress bar. Equals new progress bar. Let's organize our imports with control shift O. Now this constructor, the default constructor, where we don't pass any arguments to the progress bar constructor method, actually creates an indeterminate progress bar. What I'm going to do now is just to add that progress bar to the center area of our border pane. Root dot set center progress bar. And now when we run, I'll right click, run as Java application. You should see an indeterminate progress bar with the progress indicator simply going back and forth within the progress bar itself. So this is the type of progress bar that you would use when you're trying to let the user know that something is happening, but we don't know how long it's going to take, but not to worry because it's still doing something because we're showing you with the indeterminate progress bar. And the other type of progress bar, the determinate progress bar, we'll call it, the one that you're probably more familiar with, is the one where you simply see the ribbon or stripe within the progress bar moving from left to right till it gets to the end and fills the entire contents of the progress bar. For this type of progress bar, we have a second constructor, which actually takes a number between 0 and 1. So initially, we will start out with an empty progress bar with the number zero when we create it. Let's now run, and you'll see that it's no longer a determinate progress bar, but it's an empty progress bar that we now have to change as whatever it is that we're trying to represent is being done. So for example, if at some point we got 10% of the workload done, we would then say progress bar, dot set progress 0 0.1, which is 10%. The 10% being between 0 and 1, so 10% of 1 is 0.1. Run that. Now you should see one-tenth of the progress bar actually full. So there we are. Again, now if we do it at 0.5, that should be half full. 0.75, three-quarters full, and so on. So you've seen how we set the value of the progress bar using the set progress method just shown above. The opposite of that is the get progress where we can actually get the current value of our progress bar. Progress bar dot get progress. And of course that's a double value. Double current progress equals progress bar dot get progress. I'm just going to print that to our console, sys out, current progress, let's run, and in the console you should see the value 0.75, which is the current value of our progress bar. One other thing that we can do is set the preferred size in terms of the width and height of the progress bar, because as you currently saw, it's quite small on our screen. So we can say progress bar dot set 
preferred size, or we can set the preferred height and width separately, but set preferred size allows us to set both at the same time. The width, I'm going to set at 300, and the height at 25, and these are in pixels. Let's run again, and you'll see now the difference in the size of our progress bar. Again, 300 pixels wide by 25 pixels high, but still at the three-quarter mark, or 0.75, in terms of the current completed progress. And, of course, you can add change listeners and invalidation listeners to any of the progress bar properties, as you've already seen in previous videos. I'm not going to show that here, as there's nothing new to add. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any future content when I release new videos. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you today as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, please stay safe and keep on coding.